So something about my bullet. Um, it turns out that when I fire a bullet, it's going to keep going up the screen forever, even if it goes outside the room. Um, I'm going to show you the debugger real quick to show you the, what I mean. If I run it using this red arrow up here, there's this extra window that pops up. This is the debugger window. It gives you more information about the game. And then you can see your game running here. In particular, what I'm going to do is under Tools, I'm going to do Show Instances, so the second from the bottom. This window shows me all of the objects that are currently in the game. Right now, all I've got is my plane. If I click back over to my window over here, though, look, I fire a bunch of bullets. And they stick around forever. Ooh, that's troubling. One problem with this is that if I keep on firing more and more bullets, GameMaker keeps track of them, even if they are off the screen and I don't care about them anymore. And eventually, it's going to slow the game down as it's trying to compute all of these things that are off the screen. What I'd like to do is actually get rid of these once these leave my view. So let me close that. And in my bullet, once this bullet leaves the view, I want to get rid of it. So under Other, under Views, when I'm outside view 0, I want this thing destroyed. So under Main 1, the garbage can. This will make it so that when it leaves my view, it'll destroy itself. This also has the added benefit that when, uh, if there's an enemy that I can't see yet, I won't accidentally destroy him as my bullet goes flying up the room. So now if I look at this, look at the instances, fire a bunch, good. So they get destroyed as they leave the room. One last thing for today. I'd like to make an enemy real quick and put him on a path. So let me create a sprite for the enemy. You are enemy, enemy1 underscore s. I'm going to do edit sprite, create from strip, call a strip. Which plane do I hate today? This orange one, I think. Let's get rid of the blue. OK. And I'm going to center this guy. He's going to have an object, hello enemy one object, and he has a sprite. OK, so paths are something we haven't really gone over yet. It's this red squiggly arrow line. This allows me to set up some sort of path that an enemy follows automatically. So if I hit the create a path, this is what the path screen looks like. If you left click, you can place a series of points and set up some sort of path that the enemy will follow. You can make it smooth by changing the smooth down here, or you can make it straight. If you unclick this closed box, it makes it a path. If you have the closed box on, it makes it a loop. So I actually don't want these points. What I want is kind of a zigzag pattern. So I'm going to make something like this, this, and maybe this one. You can click and drag them around. And I'm going to make it just something like that, so just a back and forth motion. By the way, if you want to see what the room looks like behind here, the far right button up here at the top of the path menu lets you choose a room and show it behind. Now, it doesn't show me the boundary of the room. I think my room ends right about here. It shows you beyond the edge of the room. You can move around using these arrow keys up here, too. So I think I'm going to have my guy following this path. So I'm going to call this enemy1 underscore p for path, so I know which one is which, because my boss is going to have a different one. All right, I think that's all I'm going to do for the path. So this enemy, now I want him to follow that. The way I do that is I, when he's first created, he's going to start moving on that path. So if I go to add event, create, make sure it's the create and not the step event. The step event does something entirely different with a path. Create. Under the Move tab, there's Paths down here. Set Path. Excellent. So I want to follow which path? I want to follow the one I just made. This is the speed it's going to go on that path, maybe 3 or something. At the end, you could have it stop. You could have it jump back to the start. You can have it continue on from where you ended up, or you could have it reverse. 
I'm going to have it continue on down the screen. And then finally, relative or absolute. If you say absolute, the plane will jump to where the path is in the room. So if you had four or five planes, they would all jump to the same spot and follow the path there. Whereas relative, wherever you place the planes, they follow the path from wherever you put them. That's what I want. So if I go back to my room and throw an enemy in here, uh, I want it relatively close to my plane so I can actually see it. There we go, it's following a path. All right, I think that's everything I want to show you today. Um, next time we'll take a look at having interactions with the enemies, maybe making some other enemies, having sprites move around in different directions, and containing your plane within a room. <laughs>